All right, so what we have here are two beautiful pork tenderloins. And these are Nyman Ranch pork tenderloins, organic from Sonoma County, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to make a little marinade for this stuff. Now, marinades for me um, have to be one thing, one thing only, dry. A lot of people, and I'm not pointing fingers, right? A lot of people will take some, some sort of wet, acidic substance, like, like almost like a, a vinaigrette, and they'll marinate meat in that. It's not, it's, it doesn't do anything delicious to, to, to your meat, and I'll tell you why. Because color equals flavor, first and foremost. When you're grilling something, you want to caramelize the protein, and that's where the natural flavor comes from. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix together a couple of things, okay? Pork loves sugar. Pork chops and applesauce, right? It loves sweet flavors, right? So what we're gonna do is take about two tablespoons of lightly packed brown sugar, and we're gonna put that into a bowl. And then we're gonna add I think really the unsung hero, unsung hero of the uh, spice cabinet, and that's celery seed. Who uses celery seed for anything anymore? You like the, what do you use it for? Salad dressings, right? I love celery seed. I think it tastes delicious. It tastes really good for this particular recipe too, right? So we're gonna take a nice big handful of celery seed. And we're gonna put that right on top. All right, so you got brown sugar and celery seed so far. All right, you guys follow me so far? All right, good. Okay, then we're gonna take a little bit of uh, kosher salt. And we're gonna put that right on top as well. And then some fresh cracked pepper. And then as far as moisture goes, I'm not going to put anything that would cause it to steam. I'm going to put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on top of that because it's going to help it brown, a little fat. Okay. I'm going to get that little drizzle right on top. And then we're going to take a spoon and just kind of mix this stuff together. Give it a little stir. And this is it right here, right? This is the marinade that's going to make our pork delicious. Salt, sugar, celery seed, black pepper, extra virgin olive oil. You guys with me so far? Yeah, all right, good. Okay, a little more olive oil, so it's nice and wet, almost like a wet sand. And then we're gonna put this on top of our pork. We're just gonna let it sit for a second. All right, right on top. And just kind of mush the whole thing around and really let it pick up some delicious flavor. The best thing you can do is take a grill and set up in two temperature zones. A lot of people, and I'll, I'll give you a bad example of this, barbecue chicken, okay? People will crank up the grill, it's super hot, and they'll take a thick piece of chicken, they'll put it on the grill, and what happens to it? It gets burned on the outside and it's raw in the middle because you're cooking at too high of a temperature from beginning to end. Now, color equals flavor, so what you want to do is sear this first. So we've got our, our grill set up in two different temperature zones. We've got a hot side to sear, color equals flavor, and then we've got a cooler side, so we're gonna move it down so we can cook it all the way through, all right? So we're not gonna burn it. All right, you guys, you guys cool with that? Two temperature zones, hot and a medium hot. All right, so we've got our pork loins here. And we're gonna drop these right on top. And we'll let these guys start to cook and do the thing. Oh, that was beautiful. Let's see, one, two, three, four. We got enough for everybody. <laughs> All right, cool. So we drop this right on top. Okay, look at that, that's beautiful. Oh, man. Hey, yo. So when a pork loin will start to cook, it smells good already, it's gonna sort of kind of morph itself into an oblong triangle. So we're gonna fold this over on three sides. So it's two and a half minutes on one side, flip it two and a half minutes on the other, and we're gonna flip it two and a half minutes on the other, and we're gonna see where we are. Now I like pork that is sort of medium, medium well. All right, I like it when it's a little pink in the middle. And if you like it cooked well done, God bless you. This is a very well looked after animal. So it's not like you have to worry about anything, okay? I think. Um, how many people have had like the worst pork chop in their life, right? The worst pork chop ever, what was, so, what was so wrong with it? It's dry, right? Why do you think it was dry? Overcook it, right? Pork is delicious when you undercook it slightly. I don't mean raw, I don't mean pork tartare. I just mean when it's sort of medium, medium well. It's got a little bit of, little bit of a pink hue in the middle and some natural juices left in it, okay? My grandmother, God bless her soul, she would cook the bejesus out of pork chops. <laughs> And she would get these pork chops that were so thin, you know what I mean? They only have one side. <laughs> and she would just like, like, put some sauce on it, you know what I mean? Put some apples on it. She'd get a big thing of applesauce, you put a big dollop on it, she goes, eat it, have a good time with it. So, so it's more about like kind of treating the, uh, the cut of meat with a little respect, right? And kind of paying attention to what's it looking, isn't that beautiful? Look at that guy, isn't that gorgeous? That's what I'm talking about. So color equals flavor, right? Can you guys say that with me? Color equals flavor. Okay, the most important thing. And that's really important for chicken. It's really important for beef. It's really important for everything. 
So we're going to take this, we're going to move this down to the cooler side, all right, and just kind of let this kind of cook really slow, and this kind of let it do its thing, okay? All right, we're also going to make a really delicious salsa verde. You guys know what I'm talking about when I say salsa verde? So there's a couple different kinds of salsa verde. There's like the Latin American version of this, which uses tomatillos, all right? Those are sort of little green tomatoes that come with a paper husk. Um, a, a Latin American salsa verde um, are tomatillos that are poached with jalapenos and garlic and um, a little bit of vinegar, and they're pureed. So when you go to like a really good Mexican restaurant and you dip, you know, you it's the green salsa that comes with everything. That's a Latin American version. What I'm going to make is more of a Mediterranean version of a salsa verde. Um, it's more of a parsley sauce. It's a chopped parsley sauce. Almost like it has the texture of, say, like a chunky pesto. Um, it's got a lot of really good ingredients in it, okay? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start over here. So we got some parsley. All right, this is just regular Italian flat leaf parsley. It's been chopped. And then we got our capers. So a salsa verde, a really good salsa verde, kind of plays with your tongue. There's a lot of really good balances of tastes. So your tongue really wakes up. It's spicy, sour, salty, and sweet all at the same time. So we got the salty bit from the caper. We got the sweet bit from the raisins here. I'm going to put these in. Can you guys start to put these flavors together in your head? It's going to be really good. Okay, we got the spicy from the mustard. All right, about a tablespoon of mustard in here. All right, just regular straight up Dijon. Right on top. All right. And then we're gonna put some freshly minced shallot. Right on top. And then a little splash of lemon juice, lemon zest. And then we're gonna hit with some extra virgin olive oil. Just to really give it some body. So it starts to spin around the food processor. You want this wet, right? Okay, so salsa verde, bang, ready? All right, I'm finished. That's really all it takes. A couple of ingredients, you blend together till it's incorporated, and we're finished. Now I like to kind of serve this on the side, okay? So what we're going to do is kind of hook all this up family style. So our delicious salsa verde. Isn't that beautiful, guys? Okay, our delicious salsa verde is going to go on the table with everything else. Looks delicious. All right. And then I'm not finished with this yet. I got a little goat cheese for it. Right? Ooh. Oh, yeah. So salsa verde right in a bowl. Bang. Okay. And then we've got some soft, crumbled goat cheese, some local goat cheese. Got a small spoon over here. And we're just going to take the goat cheese and we're just going to crumble it on top. You guys into this? Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you. You're going to make this once and go, oh, wow. It's so easy to make. It's so delicious. You guys are going to love it. Okay. So, and then we're going to put a little more uh, extra virgin olive oil on top. And then we got, so we got our side dish. All right, so this is our sauce accompaniment. Salsa Verde, you guys digging this or what? Yeah. Bang, there you go. All right, these guys look really, really good. All right, let's see this guy. All right, get a couple nice slices out of this. That looks good. Perfect, okay. So this is to me what a delicious slice of pork should absolutely look like. Isn't that great? Wow. Okay, it's gonna go right on top. So it's got this kind of brown sugar crust on it, right? Bang. All right, a little bit of our salsa verde with our goat cheese. All right. Right on top. Ooh. Ooh. A little bit of olive oil I got left. All right. Dinner served, gang. You guys digging this? Yeah. 